Hello and welcome to the last video of this week. So again, the atom, you're going to see different pictures and remember not all of them are great representations, but all you need to know is be able to recognize the parts of the atom and how an atom is built. So last class we talked about the pen chart. I need you to remember that pen chart. I need you to write it as many times as you need to in order to remember it. And remember that atoms are what makes everything up, okay? Your body's made up of atoms. The water that you drink is made up of atoms. The plants outside your house are made up of atoms. Your dog is made up of atoms, okay? The light bulb in your ceiling is made up of, of atoms. So make sure you remember whether it's alive or dead, everything is made up of atoms. So everything in this universe is made up of protons, electrons, and neutrons, because those are the parts of the atom. So we talked about how the masses are different. So protons and neutrons are the heavy ones, right? Those are the big ones. They're in the center of the atom in the nucleus. And the electrons are very, very tiny roaming around that nucleus. Those tiny electrons have a mass close to zero. So for eighth grade purposes, we say they have a mass of zero atomic mass units. Now in the Bohr model, remember we have these rings around the nucleus. So these rings, like I had mentioned in our first video, are also called sometimes energy levels, shells, rings, orbits, anything along those lines, they mean the same thing. So all they're signaling out is the different layers in the electron cloud, right? So you have the different energy levels at which the electrons are moving. They are not perfect circles, but in these drawings, usually they look like perfect circles. So if you are thinking about your rings in the electron cloud, Think of them kind of like a bus, okay? So there's different rows on the bus, and each row fits a different amount of people, right? So in the first row, you usually have the driver just by himself, right? And then the second row and so on. Here in this drawing, we have our example. In the first row, there's two seats. And then in the second row, there's three seats because somebody can fit in that middle area. And in the third row, there's another third seat. So there's a different amount of space for every row for people to sit in the minivan, right? Now, in the electron cloud, a similar thing happens. Each ring is a different size, and so it fits a different amount of electrons. Now, in our electron shells, there's a small rule, very easy to remember. It's called the 288 rule. So, on the first ring, you can have a maximum of two electrons. You can't fit any more. So if your atom has more than two electrons, you have to add another shell to add more atoms. OK, so on this first shell, all you can fit are two electrons. Then the second shell fits up to eight electrons. So if you have two on the first one and then you can add another eight on the second one to get however many electrons you need for that atom. And then on the third shell, you can fit another eight electrons. And there's many more shells to come after the third shell. But for eighth grade, you only have to worry about the first three shells. So you can fit two on the first one, eight on the second one, and eight on the third one. Okay, if it helps you to remember, here in Houston, we have a highway called Highway 288. That should help you remember, 288. That is your rule, 288. Two so fit on the first one, eight on the second one, eight on the third one. OK, so these are like the seats that are filled up. So if you go to a bus, usually when you ride a bus, people want to go all the way to the back row, right? But there's only a certain amount of seats in the back row. So once those are taken up, you start going a little bit closer and closer and closer. In the electrons, it's backwards. You start at the center closest to the nucleus, because remember, those electrons are trying to get into castle nucleus. And once there's a maximum of two there, they don't fit anymore. And so we go to the second ring. There's a maximum of eight. Once there's more than eight there, you're going to need another ring. Okay. 
So first ring, you only fit two. Second ring, you fit eight. Third ring, you fit eight. So let's do a quick practice problem. If I have an atom with 16 electrons, what would the shells look like if I draw them out? So there's 16 electrons. Go ahead and get a pen. So if we have 16 electrons and we know our rule is the 288 rule. Okay, so in this first ring, we are able to fit two electrons. Okay, so let's draw two electrons in the first ring. That maxes out our first ring. Now, how many do we have left to draw? So we already drew two. We have 14 left. In the second ring, we can fit up to eight electrons. So let's draw our eight electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So we've got eight electrons there. That brings us to a total of eight and the two we had drawn before, 10. So now we've taken care of another eight electrons. How many are we missing? 14 minus eight is six. So on our last shell, on our third shell, we're going to need six electrons. So on the third shell, we would draw six electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, and this is just an example. Don't worry about where the circles go. Those are just your electrons. As long as you have the right amount in the right rings, you're good. And so now you drew two on the first ring, eight on the second ring, and six on the third ring for a total of 16 electrons. So like I said, there we go. The first two, the second eight, gets us a total of 10, and then the last ring should be the 16. So that is it for today's class, okay? I just needed you to know how to add electrons to an atom based on the rings. So we're going to do much more practice on this tomorrow in class. Please study up this video. Actually, not tomorrow in class because this is your weekend video. So that's it for this video. Please make sure you review it before class on Monday again. It's a very short video. You can watch it during lunch. You can watch it right before class. Make sure you watch your video and that you are ready for us to do some more practice on building atoms using these electron shells. Okay, that's it for today. I'll see you on Monday. Bye.